glad to come by. Right on. Keep on trucking. There you go. Yeah. You're in a good mood today, aren't you? <laughs> I'm in a good mood. I'm in a bad voice. <laughs> Saw your profile change. Mr. Not a zombie like me. We don't know that. I haven't been here yet. We should try this out. I'm implying that you will. Good <laughs> heaven. It's the last day. Anything's possible. Oh, God. Anything. Oh, God. Happy Sunday, everybody. Oh, you said it's happy. You're sitting on my bag. Lockout's over. It's a happy Sunday. That's exactly what I'm talking about. I wake up and I check Facebook and somebody's changed their profile picture. It's like, <laughs> that's a good picture. Today is the happiest of days. A little swap. Yes. You look so much different without that beer from last year. Well, I've lost 90 pounds. You know, losing the beard, that was only like a couple ounces, you know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'll get a beard back again at some point, but I was hoping that sometime this year I might actually be able to find a jaw, so that would be a good thing. I'm hoping that this will load up, but uh, I'm going through the internet with that. Most of you have seen it anyway. How many of you here uh, have actually been to one of my panels before? All right. So how many of you have not? Okay, you're the lucky ones who will not be seeing everything again. <laughs> I unfortunately, just like last year, as you can tell, get uh, the Sunday morning shift, uh, which means, of course, that everybody else is buying things next door at uh, uh, the child play auction. And you guys are like, going, oh shit, the child play auction's going on right now. Um, but we're gonna have some fun here today. I don't have much of a voice left. After this, however, uh, later today, I am going to, for the first time, uh, never have done this even back when I was with uh, WHFS in the day, done the Klingon Bastard song live. We'll try to do it. Uh, please don't expect any high notes. And since I'm basically doing it as a rapping Shatner, don't expect any actual singing. <laughs> um, yes, I'm sorry. What? Now, we do have a microphone up here, if anybody does have any questions, yeah, but we'll start off first, I guess, uh, by just explaining who the hell I am. Uh, my name is Wes Johnson. Woo! Thank you very much. Yeah. You either already know that or you have no place else to go. <laughs> Uh, great to have all of you here. Uh, you are indeed the MAGFest survivors to be able to be here this morning, to have gone through so many days. How many of you have had sleep at all? A little bit. A, little bit. a couple. It's only this side of the room. <laughs> this is the non-sleeping side of the room. This is the somewhat sleeping <laughs> side of the room. Well, uh, I had a little bit of sleep, had to because of the voice, but I did attend uh, one of the uh, legendary private parties with John St. John on uh, Friday, Saturday night, and uh, I'm now under a, a non-disclosure agreement uh, about that very party, so you'll have to wait for the uh, the YouTube videos. I'm sure it will be showing up at any time. Uh, so let me explain a bit. I do uh, video game voiceovers. That's one of the main. That's the main reason that I'm here. But I also I act in uh, some films. I am the announcer for the very soon to be playing Washington. This is very ironic that uh, after all this time since the fall, the Caps are now finally going to be playing, and it's my voice that's locked out. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to heal that back up. I've got a little green tea and some honey ears to you. Mud in your eye, everybody. Mud in your eye. Uh, I have all sorts of these uh, MAGFest money things, and uh, we'll be tossing these out all day. In fact, uh, the first person who can uh, get up here and give me one role I've played, one role, any role, hint on the screen. Uh, I have a prize from Think Geek for you. Losing the chance? Losing the chance. Thank you very much, sir. Step on up. <laughs> Take your light switch, bitches. We got a, this is great, these light switches, you can put them on the wall. I've got a few to give oh away. God. Stick it right where the light <laughs> switch used to be. 
Ah, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Thomas. He was just across the hall taping a special. Am I the only one? Oh, am I the only one hung over? I think you can answer another one. I'm no, we just need more pain. Yeah, but you may be hung over, but you've got a voice. Yeah, but I can't talk about today. Uh, there we go. Pump it on up, pump it on up. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Magfest. If you come to Magfest and you don't hang out with John St. John, you have not been to Magfest. And this Magfest, by the way, was epic. Yeah, yeah. Good, uh, yeah. good times. Well, there. I was just talking about the party that I had to sign the non-disclosure agreement for on the Saturday morning, Friday night. That was awesome. <laughs> so, um, should we should we uh, do a little something here? Or do you want to do this first? Oh, do um, well, I have to do the child's play charity. <laughs> so let's do this right now. All right. But I put you first. I put Aww. you before the children. <laughs> You put me before the tour, and that's wonderful. Is he, is he still working? Uh, something I read about. Hello, my switch is on. Yeah, it's just a, just a shitty mic. Give me that, that 58. Yeah, switch out from the shitty mic to the less shitty mic. <laughs> and? How many people here are fans of Star Trek? Woo! Yeah. Now, I want to know my separation. Who here believes oh, that one. in yeah. the original series? Oh, Star Trek Law, the original series. Very tough. Blue dog. How many people here are next generation oh, fans? Oh, oh, check there. We're pretty much evenly split here between uh, the original series and the next generation. So, I have been known, I have been known to do a little Captain. James T. Kafka, the Stasha Enterprise, who is the actual captain. But there was a fellow who followed me, came out of the closet, actually, about his head. You may be using terms like coming out of the closet. It is. It's, it's true. With your hair. Captains are supposed to hide their bones. It's part of Starfleet regulations, and yet you flaunt your orb. <laughs> I took some notes, by the way. <laughs> He's looking up his Wikipedia. You understand that the God is nothing without Google. <laughs> and engage. There we go. You had to look that up. No, no. I'm not talking to my phone. Yeah, oh, whatever. I, oh, my voice is so raw this morning. What you're seeing here is really just the remnants of Wes Johnson. John St. John. <laughs> did you go to bed like at 8 o'clock last night and sleep 12 hours? No. I don't know how you did it, man. No, I went to bed uh, at midnight, and then at 2 a.m., and then once again at 4 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> <Hey. laughs> I got a Fonzie from uh, the show. <laughs> hey. Look, let me spell out the main differences between Kurt and the cop. You don't have to spell out anything. I, I suppose I should, though, however. Kirk being brash, Picard being contemplative. I don't see how being constipated is a good thing for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Picard takes sometimes bold, sometimes subtle actions that occasionally result in members of his command getting staff cap uh, getting uh, captured, right? Okay. I e. he's a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> On the other hand, Kirk listens to sports advice, but nobody else is. <laughs> nobody. Nobody matters except for fucking sport. That's because I'm the captain. I'm the captain. Picard, on the other hand, listens to lots of people, though only occasionally his barber. And while Picard could sometimes use some of Kirk's boldness, if you will, seems to me that uh, that style is, uh, is in staffing a warship is uh, not to advantage, but to cut. Blah, blah, blah. Let's shoot something. That's what we need to do. Phasers, fire. That's what a captain does. Somebody you see in space, you don't have a conversation. You blast them. <laughs> For God's sake, you can't even string a sentence together without stopping. <laughs> 
It's gold, Shakespeare, I imagine. Look it up, be gone. Okay, here's my problem. <laughs> Why is a fucking Frenchman speaking with an English accent? The transplant. What is it? Oh, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> and that's something that he should do, is have a transplant. A hair transplant. Yeah, anyway. it's okay. Well, right. Yeah, it's really, really early for all of us. So. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, can you guys hold on a second? Can we just, let's take a quick nap. There you go. Everybody relax. I don't dress up on Sunday. <laughs> Go ahead, continue without me, I'll be right here. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Meanwhile, back on the entire block, block, block. Captain's log. Magfest. Day four. Woo. Jesus, my, my Captain Kirk impression is like Lucy at 80 at this point. Ricky Wang! <laughs> Dude, you know better than I am. So, um, sorry, you guys. I, I hate this disappointment by being so fucked up. No, that, listen, listen. How many people here would be disappointed if John St. John was not hung over on day freaking four of Magfest? Yeah. yeah. I'd be disappointed. I want, I want the clear, the clear, clean John St. John like it was when he first arrived. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. Why do you think he was a clear, clean St. John when he first arrived? <laughs> 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 did, did any, were any of you responsible for getting me drinking last night? No, but you missed my party on, the set on Friday. Oh, no. On Friday. Wait a minute, that was Friday. Yeah. Friday night, Friday morning. No, no, Friday before his panel. He was supposed to show up. Oh, wow. I'm really Mom, sorry. Mom. Well, listen, Thursday night was an epic yeah, night for you. <laughs> That was, no, seriously, it wasn't that epic. It was kind of like the Wizard of Oz, Dorothy on the bed, spinning the Wicked Witch, going outside the window. <laughs> yeah. That's terrible. Praying to the porcelain god is not fine. Can I just say that it is not nice to roofie John St. John? <laughs> That's what happened. First night of Magfest, somebody comes along, John's like, oh, thank you. This is what happens when you come to a convention and take any drink that anybody sticks in your hand is eventually they're going to roofie it. And take advantage of it. So on the upside, it didn't get late, but... On that, no, here, have a little uh, water. Now. I did not lace anything into this class. That's not water. How many people here so far... It's Russian water. How many people have tried at this particular convention to roofie John St. John? Only one year old guy in the gym. I am the star. Thanks for being gentle, at least I can sit. <laughs> I gotta tell you, it was two guys and one girl. Two guys and one girl tried to roofie you. Oh, man. <laughs> I was there for the aftermath. Yeah, you know, guys, let me just say, and I hope I'm not speaking out of turn, you don't have to roofie him. <laughs> You're gonna get the full John St. John experience. Whether you roofie him or not. Ooh. Okay, let's talk about Wes Jones. Okay, yes, please. <laughs> You're a great guy. I love you, man. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing in your panel? How about if I just sit here and heckle you? Okay, that's good. <laughs> that would be good. How about this? How about this? I will go through in. Uh, <laughs> I will go through. John's. Shh. John's sleeping. <laughs> I'll take this moment while John gets a few Z's to talk about some of the different characters I've done, which, by the way, pale in comparison to the resume of Mr. St. John, but, you know, it is what it is. All right, we're just going to start with video game right here. This gentleman right here is Malakath. 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 This is from uh, Morrowind, which was the first of the Elder Scroll uh, series that I had done. Uh, the reason they hired me was because of my very uh, gruff, rough, and sometimes Peter Brady breaking voice. Satisfying voice, please move. <laughs> <laughs> Malakath was one of the Daedric Gods, first Daedric Gods. I did two Daedric Gods during the original Elder Scrolls game. It was Malakath, and the second one was this fella, Molag Paul. Dun, dun, dun. Molly Ball, you can do voices deeper like this once your voice is in this range. Lullaby. <laughs> <laughs> and the line. 
<laughs> Dude, that's sick. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. That's what happened when you got roofied. Uh, this, these were the orcs back in Morrowind. Oh, they were God. known from their cubic heads. They, they, once they put them together, they hardly rounded them out at all. They were big square-headed guys. Um, they walked around, they were very Klingon-esque. You and I have both played Klingons for Star Trek games, correct? Yeah, tomorrow morning I'll be doing Bufat. Bufat. And, uh, and a new character, I don't know if he's Klingon or not, we have to make up a voice for it tomorrow. It's, uh, you'll be seeing a character called Seven Toes. Seven Toes. Now, how, how do you bring numerous toes into a voice? I have no idea. They'll tell me that tomorrow morning. <laughs> you don't know how it works, but you yeah. script a half hour in the voice. You walk in, you've got a, sometimes a stack anywhere from like five sheets to a telephone book. And, and there are about 20 lines on each page. And basically, you're very lucky if it says happy, sad, angry. Otherwise, you kind of guess or you wait for the voice director to tell you what the you deal is. What the emotion is or what the action is. Exactly, exactly. Back when I started doing Morrowind, this was kind of the beginning of really using voice in video games. They were sort of half voice, half of it was the reading. Yeah, and they were eight bit samples that sound like shit, remember that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, you played Duke as a so much <laughs> I did. I did. Uh, but this guy here, uh, just the orcs, was very much like the uh, the Klingon kind of thing. This guy. Oh yes, we've been expecting you. <laughs> so it's this Urgala, who looks a lot like a gentleman who was a developer at uh, Bethesda Software by the name of Ken. Did Ken wear a dress too? Uh, most of the time, yeah. This is I saw him at uh, the boat party when Morrowind was coming out. When we had a big boat party, and uh, he was dressed just like this. He actually, I have a photograph of him somewhere that I didn't bring because uh, he retired from Bethesda right after. No, it was Oblivion. After Oblivion, and he went up on the boat and did his breakfast club thing, the fist in the air. So imagine Sosius Sergano with his fist in the air, and there you have Ken up on the side of the boat. But this guy was great. This is the only picture I saw when I was looking at the characters to decide how I was going to voice him. So I came up with that voice. Ah, oh, yes, come in. Now, you look like, you, you know, someone takes your sweet roll and throws it to the ground. <laughs> what do you do? So, they were, back in that time, they do entire races with the same voice. So anybody, whether you were young, old, or whatever, had the voice of this old bald fuck right here. <laughs> had the same voice. And of course, I asked them, I say, what is he like? And they say, well, he's a, uh, he's a very feat. They're into magic. I said, is he, how is he in fights? We get to the fight stuff. I said, they wouldn't like fighting at all. They're, they're really not, into, they're into magic. They'll probably run if they're getting hit with a sword. They wouldn't like it. So when he got hit with a sword, I was reacting like a little bitch. You know, sword comes down, boom. It's like, ah! <laughs> no, please! You know. And the one thing I didn't take into account, when you're playing an RPG, you get to pick any of the races you wish to be. And it tells you that the Bretons have more magic. So those who wanted more magic were becoming the Bretons. And were highly insulted when they screamed like a little bitch while being attacked. <laughs> so, Come on, you like screaming like a little bitch. Well, I do personally, yes, all the time. All the, how many people here, when hit by a broadsword, would scream like a little bitch? Proudly. <laughs> so I simply do admit it, I think I just fall dead. <laughs> Screaming like a little bitch the first moments in the afterlife. So, Sosia Sergala, although people like him, they didn't like some of the other brands, and uh, it was one of the first mods was to change the voices of a lot of the brands and actually ingest some testosterone to them. And so you get paid for another session to change the voices. Yeah, which is nice. Well, not for the mods. Not for the mods. I have a lot of people call me up about mods and ask me to do voices for their mods, which is fun. I would love to do your mods. There are only two problems. One, that might insult the folks for the game is based on for me to actually do a mod. And two, I love to get paid for my work. <laughs> it, it, it's kind of a, an important thing. Would we work for free if there was no money ever in this business? Perhaps. But there is. I've been doing that all weekend, you know? Yeah. Voicemail, outgoing messages, I've recorded this weekend. Five? Oh, far more. I know. Five hundred. Does anybody know what this game is? 
Unreal 2. It is Unreal 2. Do you know what character I played in that game? Everybody you killed. <laughs> I was everybody you killed. Anybody screaming, testosterone ridden, little bitch, anything. They brought me in, I had no characters. All I did was scream and die for like four straight hours. Yeah, so yeah. I to the session that morning and go, hey, what am I doing today? They say, you're gonna die. <laughs> that happens every time. That happens every time. Why I have no voice. My characters do get killed off yeah, all the it time. It seems like they always do. Why do you always die in the games? I'm like the Steve Buscemi of Bethesda Softworks, but I've started coming back from the dead. You know about that. Respawning, of course. Yeah, yeah, you all come back from the dead all the time. Like this morning. We all came back from the dead on day four. Thank you. Yeah. This is an example of one of the guys who uh, was killed, or that you may have killed, in Unreal 3. And I think he died from a very severe case of the splits. He didn't appear to be happy. Okay, this is my shame. I decided to bring up my shame here today. I'm coming out of the closet as a number of the voices on AMF bowling pin busters. This is your Big the Cat. This is my <laughs> Big the Cat. Uh, okay. Not only is it my Big the Cat, it's my Quasar. Oh, I'm not afraid to be totally extreme. Oh, I'm totally calm. Oh, that pickup was intense. So yeah, the, sto the stone bowler. But this one, I'm not gonna be able to approach today. Little Z. This is in the high end of my range. He's a 14-year-old Hispanic boy. You don't do 14-year-old uh, Hispanic boys. Let me tell you, I don't do 14-year-old Hispanic boys. <laughs> I, I don't. Any other voice actors here who do. And, and I certainly won't be able to do them today. But is there anybody who can get their voice high and do a Hispanic voiceover? If you can do that, if you can give a, an impression of a little boy with a Hispanic accent and do it on this microphone, I'll give you one of the power up light switches. Anybody? You would deserve it. I think. I, all right. Here we go. Yeah. In life, you are either the bowl or the pins. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> if they had heard you, I wouldn't have even had the job. <laughs> I, uh, I actually had one other character which I could not find a picture of because I think they burned every one of them off of the internet somehow. But I was the uh, black rapper Big Money. And uh, you can't find him anywhere. Somehow I just can't imagine you rapping at all. <laughs> Christmas? Look at me every year. Um, this one, Hammer and Sickle, you talked about this the other day, looping. These, are the, these came from Russia. These were Russian games that came over. And uh, this one and this one, Nightwatch, which was a great movie and turned out to be a movie in the United States as well. Uh, the Russian version is much better. Uh, however, the Russian game was pretty cool. What voices did I play in it? I don't know. Additional characters. Thank you. Oh, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> I do a lot of additional characters. Let's see. Now, let's move on to this one. Yeah! Now we're Stop moving right on there, to me, Bill. Oh, criminal scum. No one gets away with that in my city. Your stolen goods are forfeit. <laughs> He's somewhat in my range still. But, I mean, how many places, when I saw this, when my voice showed up that somebody had put it on a My Little Pony cartoon, I knew, I knew that it was, you know, moving on time. The, um, the Imperial Guard, people love him and they hate him. They like being arrested by him, they like fighting him. My kids, I could hear them in the back room. My kids would be playing this game day and night, day and night. In the back room, I'd hear, oh, the criminal's got my, oh, uh, uh, And my kids are chopping me to bits of the broadsword. <laughs> taking everything in there. Every part of it. You know, it's like, you know, you, you, you restrict them. Okay, that's it. You're not going out. You're on restriction. Next thing you hear, <laughs> So they can kill that. Wait, wait. So you, if you punished your sons for anything, the next thing you know, they're in the room chopping you up through this. Exactly. Thing. Murdering dad. You know, it could be worse. Hernan, if, the, if the Hernandez brothers' father had done video games, he might still be alive today. So, too soon. <laughs> 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 but 
But uh, I love this guy. One of the reasons I love this guy is because the Imperial Guard, uh, being one of the main races, and everything was races in Oblivion to begin with, meant that I had about eight sessions of work, which I love. The day that they start bringing residuals into games, I don't care how many sessions I have. But in the meantime, it's all about the session work. I don't think that's ever going to happen. You know, I you know, you know I cost so many millions of dollars to make Hollywood movies. It's not just the catering expenses. Yeah. You know, it's the yeah. actors get paid over and over and over and over and over again. And and video games, the voiceovers have just been uh, unionized in the last what year and a half to two years. Yeah. yeah. They're never going to let it happen. We'll try. We'll try. Would you not dead. like? It? I'll be dead by then. Wouldn't you like to get residuals on every? Do 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 games that ever been made. I'd like to get money for some of the merch, but you know, that's not going to happen. We'd, we'd be up here sitting back in Barco loungers, having someone else paying someone else to talk for us. That's what we'd just be drinking. I could finally get rid of that 1972 Chevy Nova. I'm glad I didn't get my oh, real car. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Move out of that two bedroom apartment and get a house. This is the uh, arena. How many people have battled in the arena? <laughs> citizens of the city of Cyrodiil. So, I am the announcer, as I mentioned before, of the Washington Capitals. And I used to do the Washington Bullets and the Washington Wizards after they switch. You get really good seats for all of these things. I'm sitting right in the penalty box, baby. Right there, center ice. Full grown men slamming into the glass right in front of me. I bet you love it. Like cats hitting the screen blood. door. What's that? You see all the snot and blood on the glass? Snot, blood, piss, every fluid imaginable. It's all there. Uh, used to be worse before they started cleaning the outfits for MRSA. Yeah, it's a little fresher these days. But uh, when I started doing this, uh, Mark, Mark uh, Lampert, who is the uh, director, the voice director of Bethesda Softworks, he said, why don't you do what you do as the announcer, but put it on steroids for gladiators. So I did put it on steroids. I pumped it up, I went over the top. But a funny thing happened. When I went back to do the voice for the Capitals, I started adding a little bit of what I was doing here oh, cool. to the Caps. And it changed the way I did voiceovers for the Caps, the way I presented. I mean, I always was like a fan in there cheering on the game, getting into it, you know? But once I started adding this, it became a whole different level. And... Oh, so now you kill the person next to you literally during the game when you're really excited? I unleash the fury, baby. <laughs> yeah! The, um, the, the interesting thing is, the, like the Pittsburgh Penguins. Yeah! The Pittsburgh Penguins uh, hated me for years. Would come down here, they'd mock me, you're your announcer with this big over-the-top voice and all this and that. But the moment that they switched announcers, uh, the, their announcer was an old school guy, great guy, passed away. But then they had to audition people and bring them in. What did they do? They got a me impersonator. Which is okay. Because when I first got into the business, I was just impersonating the guy who did it before. That's the thing about impersonations and doing anything. When you first started radio, you're doing an impression of the people that you grew up listening to on radio. And it's only through working your craft that you eventually start to develop who you are in your own stuff, in your own sound, right? Yeah. So this guy wanted to do an impression of me, very flattering, very flattering. And, you know, fuck you, Penguin fans. That's why I play it. You know what? I love hockey fans all over. It's fine. But a few times a year, just a few times a year, fuck you, Pittsburgh fans. So. You're playing favorites again. I am? Do you play favorites? Who do you root for? Women. Uh, <laughs> hockey? hockey? Yeah. You root for anybody? Uh, from Southern California. There's How about the Cavs? Ovechkin, we'll get down there. Introduce you, Duke Nukem and Alex Ovechkin. We'll introduce balls of steel to the Russian machine. All right, this guy. Yeah! Fucking guy right here. You know who he is? No. Nobody does. Nobody knows who the Gray Fox is because the mask hides his face. He's basically just the regular Imperial voice that I was doing, except he says, capital. 
without the voice popping. Anyway, uh, I always wondered about this mask. Is it made of burlap? Is it like snotty on the inside? Is he afraid to wash it because the magic will go away? <laughs> this guy, the Dramora. I love the Dramora. You go into oblivion. I did all these voices and they're pretty effed up. You get inside and it's like, I will restore you. You know, this kind of thing. And then they change your face when you record on I stand on the microphone. I do. I yeah. shake the voice. Wes, you're drifting off again. Can you just be still? I try not to shake too far left and right. Yeah, and so I did this. They only did a little processing, but people ask if that's processed, but mostly it's not. No, they do throw a little. It's it is phlegm. It's phlegm and, and cheek we've flap. Got. Did you see the cheek flap? <laughs> do that. <laughs> oh, I'm fine, man. That is the patented cheek flap. He's having cheek flap. Actually, we saw some cheek flap at your party, but that's another story. <laughs> um, that's just one of the many cheek techniques. It's like the, if you do the droopy turdy or going down, so you kind of have to pull your cheek out. Going down. It gives you the more wedging in. Yeah. Bad old wolf. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I can do a droopy. Dropping some beats with droopy. Do the droopy rap. Well, this guy here, have you ever been scared by your own characters? No. I was playing this game up probably about four in the morning one night because you can't <laughs> play this game and not be up all stink at night. You think you're gonna play for five minutes next you know the birds are chirping, you're toast. You're like, damn you birds. But I'm playing the game, I'm going through an oblivion tower and this guy jumps out of nowhere. And I'm like, oh shit. And I realized it was me. I scared me. You <laughs> big pussy. I know. Aww. I know. Aww. Lucy yeah. the Cheeks. Woo! Woo! How many people here have killed Rufio? <laughs> Only half. That means Rufio is still alive. Take this blade of woe and cut off his ball sack. <laughs> <laughs> Lucian was great because they asked me to do something a little more evil, and I was doing all the straight imperial voices. And I thought, oh, this is cool. We get to do something a little different. So I got, you know, you have to come up with a character in the middle of it. In my mind, I'm thinking somebody is decrepit as the Emperor in Star Wars. In fact, you know, sometimes rolling the voice around. And, yes, dear child of Sithis. A little bit of that kind of thing coming in. I'm imagining flesh rotting off the guy, his stinking flesh. People are like, hey, I can tell Lucy it's a block away. All this stuff in my mind is I'm playing the most evil incarnate character I could ever think of. And then they put on a face of Benjamin Bratt. <laughs> they make him gorgeous. Women can't resist evil with a gorgeous face. Seriously. You can be the nicest guy in the world. John St. John, when he was a young man, the nicest guy in the world, and the women would pay no attention. No, no, I'm way nicer now than I was. <laughs> I was a prick when I was young. <laughs> oh, and, and the women dig it. Like, it's a lot. Yeah. Why is that? Why do you tricks like Why? Me? Why? Why? Why do you like Wait a minute, young lady, step up, to the police. Tell me why I'll give you a switch. <laughs> We want to know why. Why do women dig no, evil guys? No, why do some guys? women like to be, you know? Everyone likes a jerk? I don't know. Really? Everyone likes a jerk? We have one. Oh, come on up here. She wants to tell us her. Here, you take this and then give away. There we go. We always have to be right so we have to prove ourselves. So we have to make you like us. So if you're a jerk to us, we have to be like, no, we're going to be nice to us. Are, are you saying the guys are fixer-uppers? <laughs> yeah, every woman shook their head saying yes the moment I asked the guys are fixer-uppers. <laughs> every guy you ever meet, it's not like, oh, he's the man of my dreams. It's you like, always want to feel like yeah, I can work with this. She gets a prize here. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here, yeah, take a fiber for your honesty. <laughs> yes, sir. Are you are you actually one of the bricks that women love? No, no. Oh. Please approach. I think you said one of the bricks that women love. One of the <laughs> I mean, I mean, have you read Fifty Shades of Grey? I'm talking like six to midnight. I don't know. I heard. 
Fifty Shades of Grey? Come on. John St. John read it the other day. Did you, were you reading it too? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's classic. I mean, he that's so why that's the worst now. Now, I saw your hand, and I saw you doing this, and I thought you saying long. Fifty Shades of Grey, and I thought that was your third night of MAGFest. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was. Wait a minute, sir. Wait a minute. Go on up here. Come here. What? Do you have a, a tie up here? Yeah, no, I'm giving you ten bucks because, you know, we did your evening last night. Enjoy. <laughs> 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 what like this? Oh! What do you do? What do you do? <laughs> hey, at least he wasn't alone in his room with Fifty Shades of Grey jerking off. No! <laughs> 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 you mean he was worried doing that? Really? I don't really remember too much last night. <laughs> he roofied himself. <laughs> Now that makes it worse to roofie yourself and then jerk off the 50 shades of gray. Just say you had the roof you was just a part of your shirt and all. Or say you wouldn't remember how sad you were. I don't want to remember the do we? And then you wake up you wake up the next morning and realize all along it was Curious George. Oh! And it just get matters worse, one of the socks you just put on is stuck to your foot. Now see this? I do lose again. The I women you were in a gay porn. Yeah. I wasn't until I became losing the chance. And the next thing you know, deviant art is full of these photos of Lucy and Lachance everywhere. Not only that, there's like fan fiction. How much Duke Nukem fan fiction have you had to deal with? A lot. Yeah. People send you photographs of Duke Nukem and think, you know what? When he gets it. He's gonna love this. Oh. <laughs> that might be a picture some some artist sent me a few years ago. Dude, you naked and he didn't have a dick, you know. <laughs> yeah, this is just a poison apple of his loins, you know, so. And nice it's rack. And this one here, you know. Uh, this is what he really looks like. <laughs> this is what I found out. I recorded all of my dialogue and just finished it with Lucy Lachance. And then I'm playing the game and find out that the reason the dialogue stopped is because they hung him upside down and carved off his nibbly bits and replaced him with a Lucy and Lachance impersonator. But he became Stakes, didn't he? Yeah, Lucy and Stakes. That was what happened to Murray. Yeah. Nobody gets it, Stakes. This guy is the, uh, the prophet from Knights of the Nine. And I had a great time with him. I was thinking Brian Cox when I was playing the, the Prophet and his voice was all scratchy. I can't hardly remember exactly how I did him, but all I know is that once the Prophet came in at Knights of the Nine, it changed some of the dialogue through the rest of the game and removed one of Lucian's coolest lines. So oh, that's, Lucian, that's the character. You're that's the character. The Prophet came in and removed his line. This is Pelinal White Strike. He was like uh, the greatest of the Knights of the Nine, and you see him flying through the sky later in one of the great battles. Uh, he's basically a ghost knight. <clears throat> this now is Shivering Isles, and I had a great time on Shivering Isles. Had a couple sessions. The first one, sicker than a dog. So all the characters I portrayed for the first set, which is this guy, Hairdare, who's the, uh, Hairdare, how you doing? He's a, a torturer. And uh, so they every, all sounded like they had nasal congestion. They did, and bronchitis, the whole thing. This guy, I don't know, a torturer who wears Birkenstocks, can there be anything worse? <laughs> this, I like this guy though, this is Tyus. And I'd forgotten that I had done him until I went into the cave and found him and he was talking to me. And for a split second I realized it was me. When I play the games I don't know or pay attention too much to the fact that I'm actually voicing the character. I'm playing as the player, I'm the character I'm playing. But this one caught me by surprise. 
and I actually like him. He's a guy trapped inside of a cave waiting for you or someone to show up, kind of like the, the knight from uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, just waiting, and such is his pale complexion. This is Hiris Clitumnus. Anybody know him, suicide I'm sorry, guy? Sorry, you say that last name again? Glatumnus. Oh, I thought you said Glatumnus. <laughs> That's why he killed himself. He's the, he is a, a very suicidal guy, wants you to kill him so he doesn't end up on suicide hill. He's got issues. He had sort of like a, a little bit of a Jack Nicholson like kind of thing. Suma. Very, I just don't want to live anymore. And, and it was a little like you said yesterday, if you want to use a character, create a character that somewhat you're not going full Jack. Yeah, you're not Jack, you're not full Jack, but you can take a little of that and then pull it off and there's something different in there. Shayagora. Now when Shayagora first began in the Elder, Elder Scrolls, he was different people along. I think he was Craig Seckler, especially in the uh, vanilla oblivion. But they wanted to change him up when we went to the Shivering Isles. In Shivering Isles, they told me, we want Robin Williams, we want a stand-up comedy guy. I didn't feel it was right. I thought, no, you know, Robin Williams, this guy's supposed to be manic, he's depressive, he goes here, there, up and down. So I... They wanted a stand-up guy, so I started listening to different stand-up guys that I loved, and the one that I really felt would work was Billy Conley. Ooh. I love Billy Conley, really funny, but and, and he's a funny guy, but you get the feeling that he doesn't suffer fools gladly, you know? And you would love to sit in a room listening to him talk all night long, but you're afraid the first time you open your mouth, he'll tell you to shut the fuck up. So, and probably really smearing him, he's probably a great guy, but there's a little bit of fear uh, with Billy, and so I took a little bit of Billy, took a little bit of uh, the, the Connery uh, kind of lisp, and then I, I took these guys that I knew from the Irish Channel over in uh, DC, that I go to after the games, uh, the Stacks, and they have these wonderful Irish accents. So I took a Scottish and an Irish accent, and I mix them depending upon the mood he was in. So it became Skyrish? It did become <laughs> Skyrish, for Skyrim. That's the, well, actually Skyrim's later, different thing, oh well. It was close to the best example or explanation of it I could give. But the funny thing was, after this game first came out, listening to people over in Europe going, where the fuck is this guy from? His accent is all over the place, but intentionally, I went with two different accents and mixed it because he isn't Scottish, he's not from Europe, he's in the Shivering Isles, he's both demented and he's manic, and I, I want to have fun with him, and I even took the accent completely off whenever he got really quiet. Care to donate for the brain pie. If you listen, there's a few moments where he has no accent. People will say, why does Shea Gorth have an accent? Because he wants one. That's all there is to it. He's the daydream god of madness and he can do anything he wants, and usually does. I love some of the fan art from Shea Gorth, too. This is great. I uh, found this one on DeviantArt. It's one of the ones I really enjoyed. Uh, cheese seems to be a central theme for Shea Gorth. He had one line where he was like, cheese for everyone. Wait. Strike that. No cheese. Which is just as good a celebration if you don't like cheese. <laughs> and the next thing you know, cheese is the motif. He's got cheese wallpaper. He probably has like cheese underoos, cheese bedspreads. Actually, I think that's something that's going around for housekeeping tonight after the night <laughs> festival. A lot of Fermundo cheese on the street. Oh. Oh. Oh, come on. Listen, we can you take this farther. <laughs> Yeah. I blame Colonel you. Lingus. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Burke, let's yeah. move over to Fallout. Woo! Mr. Burke was great. I did about 11 separate voices for, for Oblivion, which is a game just before this, and hardly anybody knew it was the same guy voicing them. Uh, and then I, they asked me to reprise my Lucy and the Chance voice as Mr. Burke, but strip away the little slight accent he had. So I slipped, slid that away, did Mr. Burke, 
and everybody comes out going, God damn, Wes Johnson has one stinking voice. <laughs> but that's funny. I find that funny because I know today I do have one stinking voice and it's a completely stinking voice. I have no voice. However, it's Lucy at 80, but I love doing Mr. Burke. He's the one who asked you to blow up Megaton. How many people blew up Megaton here for uh, Mr. Burke? Wow, how many people didn't blow up Megaton? Pussies. Pussies, yeah. All pussies, one. I do the game three or four times. Yeah. It's gonna and what I like really is that Mr. Burke actually starts writing pathetic, stalkery love letters to the female players. If you, if you kind of sweet talk him and seduce him, you're getting these really twisted love letters from Mr. Burke later, you know? I love this guy, the Protectron robot. He was like the Robbie the robot kind of guy. He was fun to do, uh, throwing a little different rhythm and inflections as you're doing it. But I mean, I grew up loving the loss in space and the for forbidden planet. Danger, danger, Will Robinson. Exactly, and that's what he looked like. And so to me, I gave him that kind of a voice. Except when you're in the Nuka Cola factory and right in the middle of it, the advertisement comes out and it's like, you know, Hulk. Nuka. Can't do the voice. If you're, give me a yeah, sales pitch. Nuka Cola. The what? Can you say Nuka Cola but with a very uh, sales pitchy? It's new Nuka Cola. That's the kind of voice that would pop up in the middle of it. And it was fun to juxtapose that and do it and have them both with the same tinny kind of sound. I love the Protectron robots. When they did Fallout New Vegas, they only used the West Coast voice talent. They didn't use anybody on the East Coast. Now, there's a couple reasons for that. One, I think they wanted to be in the booth with everybody in person, which is fine. Uh, but the other thing is, I think it was uh, the folks who had originally done Fallout were working on the new one, and they wanted to try to keep them separated. That being said, I think the Protectron robot still should have had the same voice because if a company's going to make a robot, they're going to have a pretty consistent voice. And uh, they were very, very different. And I thought that took away a little of the immersion. There's one of the Nuka Cola robots. They had the nice Nuka Cola labeling uh, in Choi Chun. Of this guy, the Sentry Bots. Enjoyed playing the Sentry Bots. They were just more your straight up robot guys. Harder to kill. Didn't know exactly where to shoot them. They were very frustrating. This is, this is uh, Fox. But very close to Super Mutant today. He's badass. He is badass. The thing is, if you downloaded the uh, Broken Steel expansion, which allowed you to continue because the game stopped, the original Fallout game ended. So when they built Fallout 3, they ended the game. But the expansion Broken Steel allowed you to continue it open ended. But many people by that point had Fox as a companion. If you had Fox as a companion, you could let Fox go into the nuclear uh, situation and uh, reset it so it would restart the water in the wastelands. That way, because at the end of the game, it either killed you or you could send a young woman in your stead to go in and die instead of you, but it was still the end of the game. And basically then you had Ron Perlman calling you a pussy. <laughs> so that, that was taken away by Broken Steel. And Fox, at that point, became the ultimate of super mutants. You could not kill him. I spent an entire day one time with my character, every weapon that I had, getting into a battle with Fox, even though he's my follower, just to see if I could kill him. I think eventually, after about six hours, I did. I stood up with a voice like this, yes, yes, finally killed Fox. But he has this Gatling gun. He will follow you around, a laser Gatling gun. And if you are still trying to level up, you'd better run away from Fox if you're going into a big firefight because he will mow everybody down and steal every one of your kills. And then he'll talk your ear off as he follows behind you. I know it's schizophrenic, but playing the game, looks, I'm going, shut the fuck up, Fox. <laughs> shut up, Fox, over and over again. You talk to yourself in your games? No. Come on. No. You don't? No. 
No, I just, I just yell at myself, you idiot, you should have shot him when you had the chance. Why don't you aim faster? That's well, your, your characters don't follow you around and talk to you. Oh, no. No, what kind of characters follow you around in the game taunting you? Well, they did just... Assholes like this. Guy. They don't taunt you, <laughs> they just chat. They bring up small talk, and truthfully, after a while, you've heard it all. You know, not to get ahead of myself on here, but how many people have heard the tale of Matthew Bellamont? <laughs> I love Fox. This is Uncle Leo, who had the same voice as Fox, but really was not quite as uh, tortured as Fox. The thing about the Super Mutants was they have gorilla-like voice boxes, this particular strain of the FEV, the East Coast FEV. For some reason, Fox kept his intelligence but could not process it. Very close to the same for Uncle Leo, but not the same. Everybody else, all the other super mutants, stupid as a rock and very evil. This was from Point Lookout, one of the expansions. This is the Tracker Yokel, which is basically uh, the guys from Deliverance, all mutated, chasing you around, trying to make you squeal like a pig. You got a real pretty man. Oh, God. <laughs> Look mighty cute there, Gene. Yeah, the, the, uh, the left arm there would have made your evening last night, sir, very difficult for him. So, <laughs> this is uh, Scrime Bigsley. Scrime Bigsley, who was in Broken Steel, and there's some folks who actually uh, seem to like him and have been putting out little comic strips and things of that sort. He is the closest to my actual voice that you're not hearing right now. He's the closest to my actual voice. Mark Lambert said, we've never really done you doing you. But uh, Bigsley was tired, overworked, very depressed. Just whatever, what do you want? Fine, He's, he, was, he was really, I mean, you want to talk about a little bitch. Scribe Bigsley was a little bitch. And he was like, fine. He's not happy. He's, he looks like he has iron poor blood, doesn't he? <laughs> Let's see, where do we move from here? Ah, Star Trek Legacy. This was way cool because I got to where all five of the captains, the original captains, were on this game. So I got to be characters and captains of other ships in the Federation. I was Klingons, I was Romulans, I was even bored. So I played all these different characters and they got to interact with the different captains. But for the E3 version, I was Captain James T. Kirk in the Starship Enterprise. I actually did my best to match what Kirk sounded like in the original series. And they put the game together and went out and it was at E3. And that is what they used to convince Shatner to do the game. They took the game to him, they played it, they showed it to him, and they said, well, hey, if you don't want to do it, we've got this guy. So I was this close to actually being the captain of the Starship Enterprise, but that's when Shatner threw a, like, a Gorn-sized paper mache rock <laughs> off my chest and uh, took the job back for himself and uh, even mentioned that in an article for Reuters, which was one of my, my favorite things. I want to show you a little bit, if you don't mind. This is one of the scenes from... Oh, really? Holy crap. Time flies when you're having fun. This is one of the scenes from Star Trek. Today, the former General Member. Thanks to your swift action, Deep Space Nine has been secured. You have earned great honor for your house. But we still have to marshal the other forces in the system. Never have I fought such a soulless enemy as these. Bore again. But rest assured, we shall be victorious, and souls are no, we shall send them off to great war. Lead on, Captain. We shall follow you into the belly of the beast. Our long-range sensors have detected three battles. Two Romulan fleets are fighting four vessels on opposite sides of the system, while the remaining Klingon forces are also engaged in a fleet action at the third location. Whatever you decide, Captain. We will be at your side. So that was uh, pretty cool, and, and uh, that's the second game that I was actually spliced into with Patrick Stewart. I'd love to say that I worked with Patrick Stewart in two games. My characters did interact with him, but we were in different studios 
on different sides of the world. Um, <clears throat> before we go, I, I've got a couple more. I did uh, The Emperor, The Dramora again, uh, Lucian came back. I was Shea Gorth once more, but Shea Gorath was actually you this time in uh, Skyrim, okay? He was your character. We all know that. He talked about everything that you did. And, uh, you know, no matter whether you were male, female, uh, you know, a cat creature, whatever, having the Wabajack, you morphed over 200 years into Shea Gorath. And then there is this role, movies, women. He keeps sounding like a 13-year-old going through puberty. <laughs> voice. That's one of my favorite roles, the 13-year-old going through puberty. That it is. Let's move this. Let's see, move along, come on, nothing's here, move along, that's it, quest, okay, there's he who killed him, thanks everybody for killing the Emperor, Shea Gorath with his new look, oh, this guy, Hermaeus Mora in uh, Dragonborn, the most recent, he has more eyes than you, and he's probably one of the most effed up voices I've ever done. This was from a movie called, uh, for Rich or Poor, I got to work with uh, Tim Allen and Kirstie Alley, and I was the guy doing the Amish Lincoln there, got to work with Chris Rock and head of state. I was actually, this was very cool, Don LaFontaine's last voiceover was for Phineas and Ferb doing the introduction. And he didn't do the middle part. And they had me come in and do the impersonation of Don and fill the middle part in to keep the last Don LaFontaine voiceover alive. And that is a huge privilege. I don't think I have it here. Sorry. But uh, basically it was like, and started Lorenzo Lamas as me. That was basically it. Um, but I also, this is uh, Nicole Kidman. Got a chance to work with her on the invasion, uh, which was fun. Although and he was the homeless guy? Yeah, you know, I was the uh, newsstand guy. I'm on the phone with my girlfriend going, why should I get you flowers? I didn't do anything wrong. Hold on a second and give her the money. And then she takes the money and she goes, I'm like, I'm what? I am all about the romance. And they kept it all in, making up my lines. and. They kept it in the movie, which was cool. Um, they cut the second half, and the second half, the stubble was gone, the, all this was gone, I was turned into an alien, and uh, that was cool, but they cut that part because they brought the Wachowski brothers in, and they changed the whole second half of the film. How does it make you feel when some of your stuff ends up on the cutting room floor? As long as I'm in part of it, and I get paid for it, and get residuals, I'm cool, yeah. This one here, I mean, anybody see the uh, Ray Lewis commercial that was recently on? Uh, the Visa commercial. I was the uh, reporter that was in, that was saying insulting things to Ray, and then the little girl steals the show. And, every, and I'm, I love that. Everybody's saying, "I hope you're not upset that the little girl stole the show." And I'm like, "Hell no! I'm in the spot. Little girl steals the show. That means they'll run it more. That means residuals come my way." This is at a Washington Capitals game. You'll see this look again shortly. I am unleashing the fury right here. Pretty happy. Oh, that was uh, the guys were not laughing at a dirty joke right there. Doesn't look like <laughs> they're waiting. They take bets. All the officials in the box around me take bets to see if this is the day I'm going to have an aneurysm. <laughs> <laughs> this is Selma Blair, and I was playing a character in a John Waters movie called Fat Fuck Frank. <laughs> You gotta love that. I was a biker named Fat Fuck Frank, uh, Selma Blair. They put these giant latex. Uh, they're, not real. they're not real, sadly. But Selma did whip me with them in during the nude version of those in the uh, holiday house scene. And uh, after the first take, somebody goes, "Do we want to get a? Do we want to get a safety on that?" And John Waters goes, "No, those things are too expensive to waste on Wes's head." So, so is there an unrated version of the DVD or we get There's an NC-17. I will show you, I mean, don't see that part, but, but as we end, here is a scene from a dirty shame. Oh, Mr. Stickles, my name is Fat Fuck Frank, and I'm your daughter's number one fan. She moved to the Erie Canal area. Hey, Vaughn. Hey, hey. Caprice retired from show business. She's no longer a public figure. Her name ain't Caprice. It's Ursula Hutters, and she's famous. She got the biggest tits on Hartford Road. <laughs> Ursula! Ursula Hutters! Texture. That's what I call it. It's me! Fat Funk Frank! <laughs> and I miss that great big fruit! <laughs> We sure didn't have 
love this in DC. God, I love Baltimore. It's a real city of diversity. <laughs> Go home and free your daughter. She's one of us and needs to be here now. I'm number 11. Number 11. He's a sex saint. And he's got powers. I've got a heart on a goal. And my tongue is on fire. Oh, I've got hot pants, Ray Ray. Roll the heat. And as you know, Sylvia is a cunnilingus bottom. Who wants to eat her out? Let's go sexing! And there's me. That was from a, a Dirty Shame, and I gotta tell you, that was one of the funnest sets I've ever been on. It was a great time. It reminded me of being back in the old drama departments uh, back in high school, you know? And, um, it, it was it was a blast. What's yeah. John Waters like? John was great. John was well, he's uh, a twisted maniacal motherfucker. Well, he is, but he's a real gentleman about it. You walk into his house and he's got an electric chair right there when you first come in, <laughs> and there is a giant picture in his kitchen of uh, one kid being on another butt. Uh, you've got. You've got uh, a wall full of books, and he's very relaxed. I went downstairs to use the restroom down there, and on the wall is a framed uh, case that has the uh, sunglasses that Patty Hearst used when she robbed the bank with the uh, Symbionese Liberation Army, and uh, it's signed over all my love, Patty Hearst. And uh, you know, and I got to meet Patty in the movie, you know, and hang out with Patty Hearst, and I got to, uh, you know, it was just a great time. It was really very cool, and. Uh, working with Tracy Ullman was a blast. And Selma Blair played my girlfriend in an NC-17 film like that's ever going to happen again. So that was fun. Now, I have $20 in MAGFest bucks. We're going to give some things away here real quick. Anybody here who can tell me what my, what fat fuck Frank's name was in the R-rated version? They changed it? They changed it. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Fat Funk Frank, that's not the R version name? No. It's worse? It, it, no, it's, it's lighter. NC-17. This film was rated about, a month, about two weeks after the Janet Jackson thing, and the FCC brought a ton of bricks down on John. And this was movie was, three should three? have been an R. It is. Yes, young lady. Fat ass Frank? It is not fat ass Frank, but I appreciate the thought. <laughs> Anybody else? Uh, something Frank. It is still alliterative. Yes, yes, sir. I believe that would be Fat Freak Frank. It is Fat Freak Frank. Come up and get your twenty dollars, sir. John, we got a twenty to ten to give out here. If you got a question for somebody, wow. Uh, but it's your panel, dude. Who would like a I, I know, but I just feel like you. Why not? She raised that title, man. Uh, you're entitled. I crashed your damn panel. All right, wait a minute. Matt, you, I will ask. I will ask a question about the Washington Capitals. Then, how about that? Yeah. yeah. All right. For a ten or a twenty. Um, let's give this one as a twenty. I want to know three coaches who have been players for the Washington Capitals. Adam Oates, Dale Hunter. Doesn't have to be a head coach. Those two are correct. Come on. Oh, I called me. 
Yeah, he is a goaltending coach. I'll give him that. I'll give him that. Here you go, sir. We would have also accepted Callie Johansson. Yeah, you forgot about Callie. Don't forget about Callie. Uh, and he, we got a 10 spot. What are we going to give a 10 spot to? I will give a 10 spot to the first person who gets up here. <laughs> Wait a minute, runners up, you two guys, come here, you get five each. <laughs> That's pretty good. Cool. Right there. You guys get those away? We're gonna give we're gonna give these away. These can be thrown. Here, give me a handful. Let's play you catch it, you win it. Alright. Okay. These are all dollar, right? Those are in the back. May they want to come up to the front at this oh, point. Great shot! <laughs> Here, John, you're better throw than I am. Did I put a knife on yet? Here in the back. <laughs> oh! Those are actually what, up? <laughs> what did you get? A one. <laughs> one, one, one. If you catch more than oh. one, they tend to have I caught it in my eye. I feel it up. I'm so lucky today. Catching that one. It's great. Thank service. you very much. <laughs> 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 Wait, go. do two of them. Sing the sound of the demon. So watch your eyes. Oh. Last one. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Uh, All right. Awesome. Now let's see. I need to find. Um, let's oh, see. Throw that one. Yeah. Throw it. Are you serious? Yeah, throw it. This one's gonna put out an eye, definitely. <laughs> Who wants the most? Oh God. Okay. I already got one. Oh. <laughs> Okay, we need uh, someone who's wearing any kind of hat. Any kind of hat. Come get it. Come get it. Oh. Any kind of hat. There you go. Obviously, the fastest Kitty. wearer is the winner of that one. Uh, anybody here who is wearing any kind of designer underoos? <laughs> what? Now, prove it. You, you give me that way to You give this to whoever you wish. Oh, she's demonstrating. Oh, yeah. I'll take it. It's good. I'll take it. There we go. Uh, guys, do not attempt to try this up here. Um, let's see. Anybody who works currently with this, the soft works. All right. I knew who you were. Come on up get it. Wow, is that nice enough? Andrew. Yeah, but he works in QA. He needs something free. Oh. oh. Am I wrong? I'm not wrong. Okay. Uh, anybody who will make sure that anything that was videotaped at John St. John's party never makes it on YouTube. Go, John. <laughs> but if you do have that tape, I'd like to see it. Yeah, he was roofing. Or any, any photos from that event that I can hold up any, with my left hand. Anybody have a photo from that We're event? We're having a whole COVID moment, are we? Does anybody have an autograph on their badge from John St. John? I missed you because you ran away. <laughs> there you go. Now it's in my suitcase. Launch it. We have four more, sir. Would you come up here uh, and explain to everybody how late it is? When's the next person coming in? Uh, twelve. We they're in at twelve thirty. They're in at twelve thirty, so we're taking up their time. If you would take that and hand it to the most worthy person there, I would like the most unworthy person to come up here and get this. Oh. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> And now the prize to the biggest douchebag in the room. He put his hand up. <laughs> who, who put your hand up? Who's the biggest douchebag? Well, technically, oh, come get him, sir. Come get him. Oh, <laughs> fucking douche. <laughs> and this one goes to, um, let me see, I'm going to pick a name at random. If your name happens to be Michelle Misha Miller. <laughs> There you go. You're kind of like Santa Claus in your panel. Oh, 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 oh. 
I don't have anything left to give except to uh, uh, honeys. There's one for you. Hey guys, that makes me your honey. Am I your you too? Aww. Thank you all for coming out here today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Let's hear it for John St. John. And no matter whether you like Kirk or Picard, whoever you meet out here today, engage. Sorry those voices didn't come together this morning. Right? Oh, we were so fried and screwed. Come on, yeah. business traveler. Beginning call in the aisle. Price line. <laughs>